Hi, oh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. We're going to discuss uh, further into the natural exponential function y equals e to the x. I probably went over in uh, several videos ago. You see all those in the video link below. But in this case, I'm going to derive it strictly from the natural logarithm or logarithmic function, uh, basically y equals ln of x, which I defined as integrals uh, using integrals and derivatives, or basically calculus, in my earlier video. So make sure to watch that. Yeah, and now if we basically graph this natural log function like I showed in my earlier video, it looks something like this where it's, uh, it goes to negative infinity as you approach zero from the right side. So you're basically going all the way down here and then it approaches infinity when you go to infinity on the right side here. And this value right here, this is at one or basically the, the point here is at one and zero. So basically y is zero when x is one. And also another key point is basically when uh, at the number e, which I, sh uh, I showed that there has to be a number e such that uh, this point here is 1 right here. And I'll, I'll, in my later video, I'll define this, this e to show that it's exactly the, the one we're familiar with, which is 2.68, something like that. And this is 1 right here. So this point right here is e and 1 right here. Yeah, and this is just basically ln of x right here. Yeah, now from this uh, graph right here, you can see that ln of x is an increasing function, so it's always going up, there's no up and down, and uh, yeah, basically thus it's a one-to-one -one function, uh, which I showed in my earlier video. Basically, this just means each y value, let's say for here, has only one corresponding x value, so it just goes down here. So if you draw a line from here to here, this only has one x value, that's this one. At this x, you get this y. You, you do not get two x values as you would get with, a, let's say, a sine curve or a trigonometry curve. So basically, thus, it has an inverse function. And once again, like I showed in my earlier video, this inverse function just means you can switch or invert all the data points from, let's say, x, y, like in this one, 1, 0, to y, x. Or if you were to invert this one, this would go to 0, 1. So this would be a, a data point right here. Yeah, this is obviously not the scale. And also, like I showed in my earlier video, if, if it has an inverse function, you could clearly just, uh, yeah, so basically you just reflect this off the y equals x line. So if this is the y equals x line, which pretend it goes to the center anyways, y equals x. So you would just reflect them all over here. So this is now, this point here is uh, 0 and 1 as opposed to 1, 0. Yeah, and basically this is e to the 1. Now this will be 1 and then e. So it'll be somewhere, let's say e is here. And this would be this point right here. And, and as you can see, it just, it's a reflection off it. So if it's going asymptotes here, becomes this, this becomes a horizontal one over here. So you get something like this. And it goes up like this. And basically a perfect reflection off this line. And at this point is obviously 1 and e right here. So now before we get to this y equals e x lines, which is uh, it, which is obviously the inverse function here, but let's just call this e x p uh, of x. Let's call this y equals e x p or exponent just uh, of x right here, and this denotes the inverse of it. And I'll show why uh, later. We'll define this as this function. Why do we get there? Yeah, basically I just said let let this uh, e x p be the inverse of y equals ln of x because it exists. Or in other words, if you have ln y equals x. Again, we're just gonna switch the x and y's. So the y now is equal to the inverse of it. So we invert it and we're write it as a function of x now. So uh, this one right here. So this is basically uh, basically just definition of an inverse function. Yeah, now before I get further, I just wanna recall the cancellation formulas. Uh, I went over a while ago in my earlier video. Basically, if you have, let's say x equals to f of y, I'll just be dealing with f of y in this case right here, then you'll have basically y is equal to the inverse, and the notation is f to the power of negative 1 of x. So that's the inverse where you get solve for y in here. Yeah, now the cancellation equation is basically when you do either uh, one of these functions. If this is the inverse, so now if we want to put the function, the inverse back inside the function f right here, so f of inverse uh, of x right here, then again, this equals to y, that's y. So this would be equal to f of y, just plug that in there. And this equals just to x, so we're canceling it out. So this basically here equals to x right here. And the other cancellation equation is when we go, in this case, we go uh, f, the, basically the inverse, f inverse of the function. So in this case, let's just put f of y right here. 
So if we have this one, this equals two, that's just basically uh, this x. So we'll have the inverse function of x. And now this equals two basically, that's just y. Yeah, so then th this is y right here, but it doesn't matter which uh, variable you use x or y, you get basically these cancellation equations from the top one, you get f of f of negative x. So basically the, the function, when the inverse function put inside the function, you'll just cancel to get x. And also if you have the inverse of now basically the function f of x, in this case we use f of y, it doesn't matter which one you use, just to change a variable, and this just equals to x. So these cancel out, you get back to x. So when we have this case for our ln function, we'll have the, we'll have the following um, cancellation equation because we have this exp of x, that's what we defined it as. So we'll have now exp of now ln of x. So the inverse is putting this ln of x inside this exponent or this inverse has to cancel out equal to x. And we also have basically ln now or the function I mean the inverse put inside the function. So this is gonna be exp of x, and this just equals two um, x right here. So we'll have two kind of cancellation equations. One where we put ln of x inside the inverse, and the other one where we put the inverse inside ln of x, which is our f of x in, in this case. So basically we have to have these cases right here. Yeah, and now from our graph, we have other requirements for the inverse function we have right here. This goes one and zero, this has to go to zero and one. This is E and one. This has to go to one and E. So then we have to have for our, our def this function we defined EXP right here. This EXP of uh, when you plug in one, this equals to, yeah, this equals to basically E. Then that's only that's because it's the inverse where we're looking at when we have ln of E, this is just one. So all we do is switch it around. So this is gonna be one and E instead of E to one. And we also have in this case, EXP of uh, this one is of zero. This has to equal one. And that's once again, ln of zero equals one. You can learn more about this in my video link below. Yeah, so we have these requirements right here. Yeah, now another requirement is basically for recall from my uh, earlier video I did on the log law. If r is a rational number, meaning basically, let's say we have 2 over 3, anything that's made of integers, 2, 1 over 3, etc., then you'll have the log, log law that I showed, which is ln, let's say, of e to the power of r. This just equals to basically r ln e. So you bring down the r uh, uh, out. Now when you have a ln e, that equals to one, so this just equals to r right here. Or in this, oh yeah, basically this is, or we'll have ln e r equals to r, or if you were to write it as the exponential now, or I mean, I mean as the exp. So when we deal with the inverse, we'll have to have the requirement of exp, remember it's, a, it's we just switch around, so exp of r now equals to this inside function e to the r right now. And now when we, ha when we take all of the, this into account, the graph, and uh, these cancellation equations, uh, these requirements for the, the data points right here, and th this point here for rational numbers, then it looks like here we can define basically this uh, inverse function as e to the x. So yeah, like uh, I just wrote down what I said, basically taking account of all the above requirements for the inverse of ln of x, it leads us to define, even if x is irrational, basically exp, yeah, exp of x right here, or the inverse of that ln x equals to e to the power of x, even if x is irrational, just because it fits all these requirements. For example, when we have, we have the requirement exp of one equals to basically, if we plug in this one right now, this goes e to the power of one, that equals to e, and this fits this requirement right here, which is exp1 equals e, so we have that's, that, that's uh, true with e to the x. When we have exp of zero, this equals to e to the power of zero, and that just equals to one. This also is a requirement we just showed above, so this is right, this is right, and the other one is uh, basically this one right here, exp of r, so we go exp of r, this equals to basically, well, e to the r, and that's correct as well. So basically, the, yeah, it fits all of these ones. And now when we look at the uh, cancellation equations, we get basically e of, um, or exp of ln of x. This equals to basically e to the power of ln of x 
like shown my earlier video on uh, log uh, logs and their properties these just cancel out and you're just going to be dealing with x so that's the cancellation equation that's true as well and the other one is when you have ln of basically e to the x is another log law uh, this is the same base e and ln e this is just log base e they just cancel out and we'll order this x goes down using even the law that i just showed above here for the e to the r so we could just bring that down and this equals to basically uh, x right here and this is a cancellation equation which is true as well so based on all this one we can define it now or we actually just did, did define inverse as that so basically just to write it all down what this would res uh, basically defined now is ln when you have ln y of x the inverse is basically y is equal to e to the x right here yeah, and basically, yeah, so we have this part here, and I just want to state that the natural exponential function e to the x is very important because it is used throughout calculus and engineering. In fact, it is the, one of the most used uh, functions, basically, of all time. And uh, basically, it's, un it's good, uh, good and important to understand its graph. It basically, looks like this, where it's 1 here. It looks like any other exponential function, except this number e is very important. Uh, for the derivative, so uh, like I showed in my earlier video on the number e, so make sure to watch that, and also y is equal to 2.68 or 618 or something like that. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this video, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.